All right, this is our high voltage accumulator for our V66 Formula SAE EV car. Starting here with our top box, this is gonna control every part of our accumulator uh, between opening the airs, shutdown, pre-charge, discharge, TSMP, cooling, DC to DC, all the important stuff that happens within this accumulator. So starting over here, this is our main low voltage connection to our low voltage breakout board. From there, this is going to power all 10 of our fans for cooling, as well as control the airs, both positive and negative, pre-charge and discharge relays. It also communicates with our BMS board and our IMD to ensure that there are no faults going on in the system. Starting right here, this is the most negative terminal of our battery from our segments. It comes up through our intermediate lid through this hole into this inline connector and then into air minus. This air minus then comes across through this bus bar into our 80 amp master fuse, from the 80 amp master fuse into where the energy meter will go. The energy meter will sit in this spot and be supported by this mount. From there, this comes up through our current sensor and into this inline connector. From this inline connector, we move to the lid portion, which goes first through our interlock and then through our HVD, back into another inline connector, connecting right here, into air positive, and then back down to our most positive segment. These things also are wired up to our IMD, pre-charge and discharge, and TSMP, and DC to DC. As you can see over here, everything is fused within six inches of source. This right here is our DC to DC fuse on our negative side. Over here is our DC to DC fuse on our positive side. Same thing with IMD. IMD negative fuse, IMD positive fuse. These guys come through, all, rated, all covered in high voltage rated heat shrink. Everything low voltage, is also covered in the same high voltage rated heat shrink, only a different color to indicate that it is not high voltage. As we move through our intermediate lid, you'll see various connections. Right here, we have a connection that controls our shutdown to our interlock and HVD, as well as our discharge circuit. We have the inline connectors for the lid. We have our TSMP measuring uh, connector, as well as our TSOL connector right here. Okay, this is an example of one of our segments. As you can see here, this is our BMS board on top and our thermistor harnesses on the side. Each thermistors are placed on negative sides of each stack, ensuring that we get the most accurate temperature reading off of the entire cell or an entire segment. These guys are all wired into our BMS boards on top, which handle measuring our voltages of each stack as well as communicating the temperatures and voltages up to our top box. Each segment is a 22 series by three parallel connection. This gives us, when wired, all five wired in series gives us our maximum voltage output of 460 volts. You can see right here, we've got our rad locks on top, which is how we connect each segment to each other. And all of our nickel fuse spot welding, our fusible links in between each cell. Putting our segments in, it's important to note the orientation that they go in. Now this is dictated by our 3D printed segment mounts, meaning that we can't put them in wrong. To demonstrate, this is me putting in the segment three backwards. You'll notice that as I try to put it in, it does not get fully seated. And furthermore, if we remove our rad lock covers and we take a maintenance plug, there is no way to connect this. It doesn't reach, it doesn't fit. There is no way to ensure a strong electrical connection when this guy is in backwards. So what we do, we put our caps back on really quick and we flip it around. Now this is the correct orientation, and when we go to put our segment in, bam, just like that, now we're ready to put in our final mounting screws. We have two mounting bolts on either side of the segment. These bolts are what constrain it in the Z direction, so these guys get tightened up. And once those guys are tight, we're now ready to install our maintenance plugs. So what I'll do is I'll remove these two caps. And I'll grab our first maintenance plug. Now, all of our maintenance plugs are completely interchangeable. They go right here, right here, right here, and right here. However, what they cannot do is go in the wrong position. Due to our walls right here, there is no way to connect these segments in, or to connect these maintenance plugs incorrectly and they can only fit in in their proper slots. So we'll push that guy in there. And all of these maintenance plugs are exactly the same. They wire each segment up in series, allowing us to reach that 460 volts. Okay, once our battery pack is fully assembled, for the sake of this, I am not putting in all of our maintenance plugs to ensure that we're all safe. 
However, there will be three more maintenance plugs connecting all of these segments together. They're also connected via our uh, BMS spy harness, which is what communicates up to our top box board relaying the information due to temperature as well as cell voltages. The entire inside of our accumulator is lined with this Nomex insulative material. This ensures that there can be no uh, shorts to the ground of the container and, improve, and ensures that everything is properly insulated from each other. This is present on every single face, both inside the segment cavities as well as both walls and on the top of the lid. Moving now, we can go ahead and install our intermediate lid. This intermediate lid is made out of polycarbonate, which is our main insulator between our top box and our high voltage segments. So, our BMS board right here is what will connect to our spy harness down there. And now it is time for our most positive and most negative maintenance plugs. Those guys look like this. Marked orange for positive, black for negative. Now, you'll notice that this one has a female connector and this one has a male connector. Meaning if I try to take the positive and put it in the negative slot, I cannot ensure a connection here. There is no way to hook this up and secure the and complete the circuit. So what needs to be done is that the positive needs to go into the positive slot like that and then get connected to the inline connector right here. Like that. And the same thing for our negative. Our negative slots in just like that. And that connects right there. Now from here is where we would connect to our intermediate or to our lid of our accumulator. We plug in the various high voltage connections that we need and we bolt it down. When we go to disassemble, we take the lid off, we, we disconnect our maintenance plugs right here, and this is what allows us to bring our intermediate lid up. We need to be able to ensure that we can take off all of our maintenance plugs without the use of tools. These ones are pretty easy. go and now all of them that are just like this come up like that come up like that and we wiggle them off now anytime we have exposed terminals we want to make sure that we cover them with our caps and just like that we have completely disassembled our battery pack all right once our pack is completely assembled what we'll do is we'll walk around the container. So as you can see here, we have all of our necessary high voltage stickers on the accumulator, both high voltage present and always energized with the triangle to signify that this is a high voltage battery pack. On the top, we have very few connectors. Right here, you'll see our HVD. This HVD slots in right there. And it can be easily removed by any untrained team member um, in a matter of seconds. Moving to the right, we have our motor controller interlock. This is our main high voltage connection to anything that needs it. Then right here, we have our TSMP connector. This connects to our TSMP panel, allowing us to measure voltages on the car. And then over here, we have two connectors for our breakout board. These connect to both the car as well as our charging cart right here. We also have our high voltage present indicator light. This comes on at any voltage above 60 volts. So this ensures that anytime the airs are closed and there is high voltage present, this light is on.